Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to JDC West Business Strategy presentation. Before starting today, the JDCW Organization Committee would like to make a land acknowledgement. The University of Saskatchewan Saskatoon campus is located on Treaty 6 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. We pledge ourselves to create a competition that celebrates the diverse cultures and history of this land. Thank you to our judges, Kenzie Bergeron, Kelly Lindsay, Jamie Prefontaine, Rory Newbomber, and Chinooka Delia. Uh, my name is William Eichhorst, and I will be the academic moderator for this presentation. Competitors will have a total of 20 minutes maximum to present. Immediately following the presentation, judges will have a total of five minutes to ask the presenters questions. Um, our academic timekeeper is located in the front here, and she will hold up signs for you indicating how much time is left. Um, once, once the question period is concluded, the delegates will be escorted, escorted out to leave the room. No questions or comments will be permitted from the audience at any time. Please ensure that your cell phones are turned to silent and that there is no talking amongst yourselves or signaling to the competitors throughout the competition. Competitors, you're free to start the presentation. William Arthur Ward once said, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change, but it is the realist who adjust its sails. In the face of adversity, your organization has been able to successfully adjust its sales and pivot through the successful securement of an offer of acquisition by Empire, which has opened the door to a new landscape of opportunities and resources. But in order to capitalize on these opportunities, you're going to have to come up with a comprehensive plan on how you're going to recover and scale your business in order to su successfully persuade your shareholders to go forward with the acquisition. Good afternoon, my name is Celia, and today I'm joined by my colleagues Amber and Liz on behalf of Meraki Consulting, and we're excited to present to you our Brewing for Launch strategy, which is going to help you triumph through perseverance and also hit those acquisition targets. Without further ado, let's dive into our situational analysis. Now, your biggest concern as an organization today is actually driving revenue and reducing costs, but let's truly understand why through situational analysis. We see that you were recently acquired by an organization, Empire. Now you each have similar, but also different goals. Gradient, you have a goal to increase your revenues as well as to expand your market share generally. And Empire has a goal to increase revenues, but specifically expand market share in Canada. Now, it's also important to know that during this acquisition, Gradient has seen a significant amount of resistance from your board. Now, this has placed quite a few amount, amount of restraints on us throughout our presentation today. We see that, you, that we must reach each of the three targets listed on the top right. Now, before we begin, I'd also like to acknowledge that your board has expressed concern over sexual harassment complaints uh, coming from uh, somebody on the Empire board. Now, we will be addressing this later on in the presentation, but we see that the concerns of revenue and costs are significantly greater, and thus, that is the focus of today. The key takeaway from this is that Gradient must leverage Empire's existing competencies and leverage those to grow as an organization, raising revenues and lowering costs. This takes us to our objective today which is to help build a timeline to, al to align Gradient and Empire's core competencies and synergies in order to increase Gradient's net income of over 100% by the five-year plan. With this, we identified three key questions. This first one being is how can Gradient optimize their production outputs? The key issue we found here is that there's currently a lack of demand forecasting, which is causing you to not accurately predict the output that you need. The second question is, how can Gradient differentiate themselves to increase sales? 
In a market like Canada, there are many different types of alcoholic beverages, and here the key issue was that you have a lack of economies of scales, and with this, you're not able to keep up with your competitors. The next question is, how can you accelerate the growth of your business to reach the milestone targets? Ultimately, the issue here is that you need to increase sales, and what's preventing you is this differentiation factor. In turn, we have our recommendation today, the Brewing for Success recommendation. This is Mix, Sip, and Serve. For Mix, our recommendation is the introduction of a new supply chain SAP demand forecasting, and this is going to help you mix the perfect optimal production to serve the new demands. Next, we have SIP, and this is going to be introducing new gradient coolers, and this is going to be a new market that we have found potential, and your company is perfectly positioned to take advantage of. Lastly, we have Serve, and this is going to be expanding to the rest of Canada and serving them, and this is how you're going to gain your new market share. In turn, this will yield a net present value of over $66 million in five years. I'll now pass it back to Liz to walk through our analysis today. So diving into analysis, we wanted to first take a look at your costs. And so let's jump into the key takeaway, though. We see that reactivity to surges in demand is your primary issue to address. But let's take a deeper look at it. We analyzed each of your primary cost drivers. And on our left, we see that these are labor costs, the cost of having a suboptimal location that you, curr that you currently have, the cost of machine de deterioration due to poor R&D and upkeep of your existing equipment, and finally, the poor reactivity to surges in demand that your organization faces. Now, when we take a look at the percentage of costs and then compare them to industry averages, we actually see, starting from the top moving down, that labor costs are significantly higher than the industry standard. But it is very important to note that your organization prides itself on providing living wages for all of your employees. And so due to this constraint, we see that this high labor cost is justified by this competency. Now, secondly, with suboptimal location, uh, this uh, this is actually due to the uh, demand forecasting issues. The true cause of having this cost driver is of the suboptimal location is actually having to increase uh, methodologies in order to transport your goods. Now, secondly, for machine deterioration, we actually see that the root is also due to the reactivity and surges um, due to poor due diligence on your equipment and poor upkeep to keep up with these surges in demand. And so the root cause of all of this is a poor reactivity to your surges. And so by addressing this reactivity to surges in demand, not only are you going to decrease uh, this 15% cost due to reactivity of surges, but you're also going to decrease all of the related costs above other than your labor costs. Now the key takeaway is that in order to best optimize and improve your margins, you must invest in demand forecasting capabilities. Now let's dive into our second key question. How can you differentiate yourself in order to increase sales? Now the key takeaway from this slide is that you must focus more on your, either your flagship products or alternatives to your flagship products. And to this, we first assessed what products you offer, then we uh, addressed the competitive landscape in which you operate, and then finally some consumer trends to align. Now when we take a look at the products offered, we see that craft beer is your primary product and actually makes up 70% of your revenue. Now the other 30% is allocated to your flagship beer. This is non-craft beer. This is beer that you can produce um, and continue producing on a mass basis. Now when it comes to competitors, we actually see that there are 1,000 different countries across Canada that produce craft beer. And if you've noticed, they're continuously popping up every day, seemingly around every corner. Now, we also see that there, because of consumer overwhelm and oversaturation of the market, there's actually been a, a decrease in the demand for craft beer. Particularly, taking a look at the stats in the top right, we see the total beer volume or sales, but particularly craft dollar sales are down 5.9%. Now, considering this makes up 70% of your entire revenue mix, this is quite concerning, which leads us to our key takeaway. In order to maintain long-term growth potential, you must pursue product expansion. Now we have assessed some alternatives, and Celia is going to be diving deeper into these alternatives during the recommendations section. 
Now, diving into our third key question, how can you accelerate the growth of your customer base in order to reach the desired milestones? The key takeaway of this slide is in order to become a Canadian leader, you must expand beyond your current portion of the market. Now, with this, we understand that there are two ways for you to increase your market share in the Canadian market. You can A, increase your the increase focus on the current markets that you are in and increase the capacity in which you operate in these or b you could expand to the rest of canada now we see across western canada this market is highly saturated actually making up uh, uh, up for 80 percent of the total craft and non-craft beer consumption across canada um, I apologize, actually making up for 80% of those 1,000 craft beer companies across Canada. Now, we also see due to this high market saturation, uh, sorry, we also see that you have an existing establishment in this market and you've captured quite a large market share of this market. When we see expanding to the rest of Canada, we understand that previously you did not have the capabilities or capacity to facilitate this expansion, but due to your acquisition, you have the resources and you are able to facilitate the facilitate this expansion with the new financial backing. We also see that the East Coast has some of the highest alcohol consumption by location per province, and we also see that it has the highest growth rate in consumption, which finally takes us to our key takeaway. In order to become a Canadian market leader and reach your growth milestone, you must expand into Eastern Canada. Now let's dive into what that really looks like in recommendation. Diving into our recommendations, brewing for launch. Our first recommendation is MIX, which is to implement SAP integrated business planning for supply chain. Now let's first understand what this software solution is. It's a supply chain management solution which, with key capabilities in demand forecasting. And this can be sorted across geographies and products so you can identify in which geographies what products are surging in demand so you can make sure that you meet those demands. Who in your organization will be using this tool? It will be primarily production managers, business analysts, marketing researchers, and financial anal analysts. And it also includes an intuitive board that you can see in this slide right here. Now we want to break this down into what the key capabilities are of the software and what the key insights and impacts are for your business if you implement this software. The first key capability is that you can analyze historical and market data to make these predictions with their AI algorithm. Secondly, it is easily integrated with existing systems that you have, for example, your ERP, CRM, and inventory management systems, which is a key capability of SAP's enterprise application software. And lastly, it's easily scalable across your many locations in Canada, so all your, all your employees can be aligned on the same insights. The key insights that your, your users can gain from the software are, firstly, how much demand is increasing across products and geographies. Secondly, how much demand can be met by your production capabilities since there needs to be a balance between demand and also your production capabilities. And lastly, where to produce the best products in order to quickly uh, meet demand and reduce spoilage, which is currently an issue with your organization, which is driving up costs. The impact of this solution is that firstly, you'll be able to select the optimal locations for your production facilities to minimize issues of selecting suboptimal facility locations. Secondly, you can improve your planning, which decreases time pressure to launch new facilities, which is what we saw was the issue that was leading to um, poor quality inspection, leading to the deterioration of your machines faster than average. And lastly, you can maximize your sales volume by tapping into and meeting the highest growth markets across Canada. Our second recommendation is to SIP. So we discussed that there's a lot of opportunities to differentiate yourself and compete better in the Canadian market, and there's several different avenues that you can explore. There are coolers, there are beers, and there are wines. These are the three alternatives that we assessed. The reason why we don't recommend going into wine is this is a completely different production opportunity. Uh, 
production process, which is completely out of your core competencies. So it's simply not feasible with the timeline we have. And the reason why we don't recommend continuing with beer is because as we saw from our analysis, this market is slowing down. But what we can see is coolers are the new opportunity. Growing at 10% per year compared to the 0.6% growth rate of beer, this is your next best opportunity. The product we recommend you launching is launching a new line of coolers in existing markets across Western and Central Canada, which contains 5% of beer in three flavors that we recommend being citrusy or fruity, aligning with what the trends we are seeing are. And this is similar to a Rattler that you may be familiar with um, on your product shelves. In terms of packaging and pricing for these products, as per status quo for most products, we recommend pricing um, each individual cooler at $3.05 and also offering a bundle, which will help your uh, customers save a little bit of money for $12. And who are we trying to target? These are mo we recommend targeting those who are ages between 19 to 35 because this is the largest uh, group of consumers who are interested in beer, but also coolers. And specifically, some of their lifestyle and values are that they enjoy going out to drink, and they do like beer, but they're concerned about the high calories, and they want to try something new. In terms of how we're going to be rolling this out in the implementation, this is where your acquisition with Empire is going to really help you. Because Empire is one of the leading um, beer companies across the world, and they also have a bunch of other types of brands, coolers and other types of alcohol. They have these production facilities that you can leverage, and also the brand awareness and the channels to do so. Our third recommendation is to serve, which is to, uh, Leverage business partnerships to drive brand awareness and penetration to the rest of Canada, particularly expand, expanding to the east. So some other alternatives that we, we explored are expanding by e-commerce, expanding by retail, or expanding through restaurants. But the reason why we didn't go forward with retail or e-commerce is because there are very high margin uh, distribution channels. And also for e-commerce, the distribution laws make it quite difficult. Um, so that's why we didn't go with that, since margins are an issue for you. And the reason why that we, we didn't go forward with restaurants is because the scale is pretty slow, but we know that your goal is to scale quickly. Highlights of this recommendation is that we recommend leveraging beer festival sponsorship and arena exclusivity arrangements, which are a core competency of Empire. It's a way that they drive most of their sales, so you should tap into this. And we recommend going for three festivals per year and one small venue, which will help you increase that brand awareness as you expand to the east and also improve your market penetration. And ultimately, the impact is that you'll be able to increase your sales by 3.5%. Now, you may be wondering, how are we going to implement our recommendations? Let's get started on how we can get started on a Brewing for Success strategy. For our first and immediate steps, we understand that shareholder concern is a great uh, problem identification that you have had. And we understand there's currently sexual misconduct allegations regarding Empire, the parent company that just acquired you. We want to highlight to your shareholders that you should highlight that this misconduct is completely independent and different from what you are as gradient. And this is not the main uh, decision factor of why this deal should not go forward after displaying the cost, cost reductions as well as revenue options you'll have with the new acquisition. For our first steps of mix, sip, and serve, this will be conducting of our contacting of SAP, the market research of our new flavors, as well as the first step of reaching out to our new business partners. For our first implementation timeline, I'd like to touch on the first three key tasks. And this includes contacting and consulting with SAP to integrate their new demand forecasting platform. The second part of this to ensure that the consultation goes smoothly and to sign the contract and do our negotiations. For the key details of how the system integration will go, the three main things that we want to keep in mind is to identify the requirements that your current system needs, as well as conduct the analysis of where the demand forecasting can come in, and finally develop a management plan, and this is going to help create our training plan for our employees. Our first milestone we'll have is to sign the contract with SAP, and then the second one is to have the platform launched in 2024. For our second timeline for SIP, and this is going to be how you'll be developing and launching your new coolers, the main task that 
going to be going on here is the development of the coolers and we're going to be doing this through a combination of market research but also conducting focus groups to ensure that these new coolers are something that our consumers would enjoy. The milestone that we have here is our new coolers are launched also in 2024. For our last implementation plan, and this is for our strategy serve and how you'll expand to the rest of Canada, the main task here is reaching out to those business partners such as the beer festivals and as well as the um, different types of venues. We recommend looking at small venues for the start for cost stakes. The key detail that I'll like to touch on here is the product development for some of the custom drinks that we'll be having. We found that for the business partners that it might be competitive and why would they choose to partner with us over other beer brands, for example. This is why we're gonna be implementing an opportunity to create your own custom drinks with our business partners. This will be charged at a premium, but alternatively, if they're not interested, they're also welcome for us to do private labeling to have their branding done. The key milestone we have here is to sign a one year, ten a one 10 year contract within the first year of outreach and then sign two contracts with festivals for the first year. For our KPIs, and this is how you're gonna know that our implementation is working, the first one is to have a 15% cost savings from the new integration of the SAP software. And the second KPI is to have 3 million bottles sold of coolers in year one. And our last KPI is to have a 3.5% increase in sales after our new festival launch. For our risk of mitigation, I'll be touching on the first and most pressing one, and this is that customers are hesitant to try these new gradient flavors. The mitigation strategy we have here is to extend a discount and promotions to help drive sales and acquisition of customers in this strategy. For our financial impact, I would be happy to answer any questions relating to this during Q&A. To conclude our presentation, we created a project plan in order to help you secure the acquisition and to communicate to your stakeholders of how you can achieve a net present value of over $66 million within five years to reach those targets through our Brewing for Success strategy. Thank you. We now open the floor to Q&A. Great job, ladies. Um, love three strategies. You teased on the financials. Oh, <laughs> wanted to stay there a little bit longer. So I'm going to ask, what are the three milestones um, that garnish success for this acquisition going to be? What are you focused on, on with all of these tactics? Um, do you mean financial milestones yeah, or the what KPIs? Are the financial mi milestones that with all of this will solve. Okay. Do you want to go back to the KPIs slide and cover that? Um, so the the first KPI for our first recommendation is a 15% of cost savings from the SAP software. That's our primary driver behind our cost savings. And then the other two milestones are surrounding revenue drivers. So we have the 3 million cans of coolers sold in year one that is driving um, our second recommendation. And then we also have a 3.5 increase uh, in sales after the uh, particularly the festival partnerships. These are uh, separate from our other partnerships that we are leveraging. Does that answer your question? In the end, in order to get that $60 million, yes. this is the latter half, yes. are we accomplishing that with these KPIs? Let's go back to the financial slide. The, yeah. the slide with the situational slide. Oh, are you asking for the situational analysis at the yeah. very beginning? Um, yeah, so like, you've got certain revenue targets that you have to hit yes. to be successful. Yes, yes, um, so yes. To be successful. The answer is yes. Um, one of the, <laughs> um, as we mentioned in the beginning, I, I believe, do you want to go back to the beginning? Um, so one of the main financial drivers that was actually not on our milestone targets in the beginning is actually that your board members would like to have a one, uh, $100 million total uh, net profit over the five year period. And so that if you were to, if you add together uh, each of our net incomes on our financial impact, if you could please take me back there, that does reach that target. And then additionally, we have each of the other targets that were listed back there. Um, as you can see, we do uh, reach each of the target year over year. So there was a target for 2024, 2025 and 2026, each of which are met in our financials. For the extension, oh sorry, for the extension of the product lines, you have the, the coolers, which is great. Is there any other kind of path you can take? And just, you know, what I'm thinking is, 
um, this trend towards zero proof alcohol. So would we research that at all as an option? Zero proof alcohol as in non-alcoholic drinks? Right, but beer, that's zero proof. Yes, we also explored that alternative. However, we see that the price that you can charge per cooler is higher and also we see that it's more easy for you to transition from a fully beer product to a partially beer product than from a beer product to completely new, like no beer product. Okay. Because of the jump and the scale we're looking to reach for, we see as 5% um, beer coolers as the most feasible and fastest growing option. Okay. So beer sale trends are going down. Yes. What's your confidence level we're going to be able to meet these targets? This is specifically with craft beer. You still have your regular uh, beer, and that is one that's looking to stay, we're looking to capitalize on the market share within the other provinces that you currently are in. With the SAP system, implementing a company-wide system of that complexity, what are some challenges we might face? Um, so one main challenge with large systems integration um, is the challenge of employee resistance. Uh, this can be combated with a strong change management uh, strategy, uh, which, um, which would likely include a company-wide announcement, as well as education, which is actually provided by SAP in this case and has been accounted for in our costs. I really liked your um, comments in regards to labor costs, how they're a little bit higher than the industry's um, average, and then um, justify that because the company has a bit of a purpose-driven culture tied to it. Um, do you have any additional comments tied to that and in, in connection to the sexual assault allegations within uh, the other organization? Um, just a comment on that at all and how that might affect you know, a unique part of Gradient's uh, labor system right now is that it's actually unionized. And instead of seeing this as a threat, our team saw it as an opportunity because we saw that unionized um, labor workers actually have a higher retention and actually can advocate themselves to be in a better position. And this is something that we can take and teach Empire, our new parent company, to ensure that other misconduct does not happen again.